Good morning all. Uh, this is an electronics set which I saw in my local charity shop and it was £5 so I couldn't resist. I had to buy it. It's the Amazing 72 Plus Science Workshop. Uh, more than 72 exciting educational experiments. Now I've not played with this uh, set yet. I'm going to do that uh, today right now. Um, but I have had a look at this section, the actual electronics board, and there's some rather iffy stuff on here, so we'll uh, have a look at that in a moment. But one thing I do like about this set is the box, and in particular, this artwork. And that thing in particular is the gender neutrality. The fact that this set is very clearly aimed at girls and boys. I mean, you can see from the colour scheme that uh, this girl here has a sort of pink halo around her, I'm not sure whether that was intentional, and the boy has a kind of blue halo around him, but yeah, this is aimed squarely at both girls and boys. And uh, for a toy, that's rather unusual, and this is a toy really, it's aimed at uh, 8+. plus. If you go down to your local toy shop, it's fairly obvious that sexism starts young. I mean, from the age of 3 or 4 probably, girls are steered with pink toys, fluffy toys, toys related to child rearing and domestic servitude, and boys are offered toys generally which are sort of conflict-based, fighting, war, but also all the technical toys generally seem to be aimed at boys. So 10 out of 10 for gender neutrality. This girl here is uh, obviously enthralled by the super sound detector to start spinning the colour filter. Uh, this boy is enjoying listening to AM, FM radio. I'm not quite sure from his expression quite what he's listening to. Probably something quite modern. Anyway, let's get this thing uh, open out of its box and start taking a look at the actual electronics. Right, here's the baseboard with all the components. Um, also a couple of battery boxes. I uh, don't know quite why one is red and one is black. These actually slide out so it's I don't know sort of vaguely modular there's a motor there which I think where that spinning thing goes and that's a speaker um, there's also a bag of mainly wires but also that spinning disc and there's some sort of um, light sensor thing or a light cover I don't know I think there's supposed to be a magnet in here as well for triggering that read switch and of course we've got uh, a manual with all the 72 plus I'm not sure why it's plus um, exciting experiments in it. Right, let's take a look at uh, a few of these components. We've got uh, transistors here, NPN, PNP, we've got a diode here, we've got some light emitting diodes. This one's uh, a 6 volt LED, so I'm presuming that has a built in resistor. These ones are just standard LEDs, and we have a variable resistor here, a potentiometer. However, when we come down to the resistors, these are resistors with an E. That's resistor with an O. So why would they have got um, a spelling mistake? It's not really a spelling mistake, is it? It's just a sort of mispronunciation of resistor. Um, here are some capacitors, but the variable capacitor they've called a variable condenser. I mean, that's an ancient term. Why are they calling the variable capacitor a condenser? Um, but these capacitors, it's just a bit strange. Right, over here we've got an AM band IC, integrated circuit, and here we've got an SCR, a silicon controlled rectifier with its cathode, anode and gate. And then between these two devices they've just stuck the word transistor. Well, neither of these is really a transistor. Is an SCR a transistor? I don't think you generally call a thyristor a transistor, so that's also a bit strange. Right, down here we've got an LDR, um, a light dependent resistor, that normally means. But uh, you can clearly see that the symbol there is a photodiode. And actually, if you look at this thing closely, I'll get in a bit closer. Yes, that does look like a photodiode. You can clearly see um, a semiconductor chip of some sort, and uh, the metalwork looks like there's probably going to be a bond wire, some sort of junction. So. No, it's not really a light dependent resistor. I suppose you could argue that LDR stands for light dependent rectifier. 
Now just going back to this uh, AM band IC, so this is a, an AM band radio IC, stick a few components around it and it becomes an AM radio. But what's this symbol? I mean it's as though they were looking up symbols for components, couldn't find anything for an AM band integrated circuit and just so shoved in this sort of bizarre inverted inputs and outputs and or NAND gate. That's just really weird. And uh, there's a sort of general criticism here. Uh, despite this being aimed at both boys and girls, I'm not entirely sure they're going to learn much, certainly from the radio side of things, because we've got an integrated circuit here. Well, I mean, you could very easily build an AM radio using discrete components. I think you'd learn more than just shoving in an AM band IC. And even worse is this one. It's the FM radio. And this is one of these reset and select ones where you reset the tuning down to the bottom frequency, I presume it is, and then you just select and it does an auto scan and there's an FM LED, the LED that shows that it's locked onto a channel. You're really not going to learn anything about frequency modulation from that, are you? Right, well I quite fancy this one, magnet control ship sound with LED. Uh, we've got an NPN transistor, PNP, we've got the reed switch, green LED. Strangely, actually I'll get in just a bit closer on that. Um, I couldn't quite work out what this was, 18 and 19, but it's here. 18 and 19 is the Pizzo buzzer. That doesn't look like a self-buzzing buzzer, but they've also got the speaker here, uh, 7 and 8. Is that the speaker? Yes, that's the speaker up on the top right-hand corner. So there's quite a lot of stuff here, but why would you have a Pizzo and a speaker? I mean, are they using the Pizzo just as a capacitor? It doesn't say that this is sound activated. So it's a bit strange. So I think I might build that one. Do you know, I'm not so sure this was ever used because uh, these wires, I think, would have been supplied all twisted together like this. And then there's a sort of set here that's kind of half untwisted, like someone thought, possibly I might have a play with this. And then there are just two wires that have been fully untwisted. So you can imagine someone might have sort of thought, oh, well, let's connect the battery box to the motor. <laughs> And that's about as far as they got. Well, I intend to go a lot further. Right, I'm working my way around the outer circuit uh, just for the moment. Oh, there's a switch there. Is that actually on the battery box? Maybe they've... No, it isn't. It's got numbers on there. Uh, okay, so I've done 7 to 54 1K. Now 53 to 18, which is Pizzo. Uh, Pizzo 19 to 100K resistor 60. Okay, Pizzo 19 to 100k resistor 60, could be 59 I suppose, but let's do it strictly according to the uh, diagram. Uh, right, now this 104 capacitor across the Pizzo, still don't quite know what the Pizzo is doing there and the speaker's doing there, but uh, well let's just wire it up. Right, I think that's all wired up. I don't think I made quite the best use of the uh, different length wires. There aren't that many wires left, actually. So this must be one of the most complicated circuits uh, in the project set. Uh, right, now I need some batteries. Uh, so I'm gonna have to try and find them. Um, I think I might cheat, actually, and just use these inner loops. It shouldn't make too much difference to this circuit. So I'll shove them in and see what happens. Right, let's do this unrehearsed. So uh, I see what actually happens. <laughs> yeah, that's, good. that's really good. That works. Now you're supposed to uh, take the magnet, which is this thing, and put it on the reed switch. I'm not sure that that sounds like a ship. It sounds more like, well, something that sounds like a ship. That's odd, I seem to need to put the magnet uh, near the top of the reed switch. Otherwise it doesn't uh, set it off. There are no adjustable parameters here, are there? Hmm, maybe I'll add some adjustable parameters. Well, I suppose this 100K, that 1K is just in series with the speaker. It might affect frequency, I suppose, but this probably will more, the 100K, so... If I reroute the wires going to that up to the pot, 
up to here. Let's see what happens. Uh, nothing, just some nasty clicks. I didn't notice that LED was coming on and off either, but it is. Yeah, just a few clicks. Wind that to the other end. That just isn't oscillating, so it doesn't actually say what value that variable resistor is, but um, it's obviously not in the right range to make this oscillate, so I'll put that back. Uh, so let's just check that's working again. Yep, yeah, that's absolutely fine. So how does this work? Well, um, the reed switch is across that capacitor. So when I put the magnets on the reed switch, we get that low frequency sound. So with the with no voltage across this capacitor, it produces the low frequency sound. Now I don't quite know whether this capacitor is actually in the uh, oscillator feedback loop. I wouldn't have thought so at 100 microfarads. But as that voltage rises up, it changes the frequency of this oscillator. And then at a certain point, um, the oscillator stops oscillating altogether. It's quite a clever circuit. I don't entirely know quite how it works. Not entirely sure what that LED is doing either. Is it on now? Uh, no. Well, that's kind of flickering. So yeah, certainly the LED seems to be in the oscillation loop because it looked like it was flickering. Yeah, interesting circuit. I'm just wondering actually if I'm really going to get uh, a good investment from the five pounds I spent on this. Maybe I should do a series of videos where I actually go through all 72 of the experiments on this board. How would that be? Now, I was just wondering what was so exciting about that um, spinning disc that uh, had that girl in such enthrallment. Well, let's find out. Let's connect that up. Oh, well, actually, that's pretty plain. You can't really see much on there at all. Maybe the excitement happens whoops, when it slows down. No, not really. Um, should we just quickly build this? It's the Big Voice FM radio receiver. I mean, there's very little to it. All it is is the FM radio receiver chip connected to the integrated uh, power amplifier IC some batteries and the speaker. Well, that's not going to take long, is it? Uh, right, that's all wired up. And additionally, if I can tip the camera, I've connected a wire from the antenna thing to actually my microphone stand because I know that FM signal reception is really atrocious in here. Okay, here we go. Oh, how interesting. Let's reset. That's Alan Parsons' project. Eye in the sky. How extraordinary. <laughs> well, it certainly works. Um, but what have I learned? Not much. There's only about six wires on that. Well, I've got to say, I'm really liking this set. I mean, despite the rather dubious labelings in some parts of it, it actually works. And, well, it's a lot of fun. And, of course, I like the uh, gender neutrality aspect. Actually, on that subject, let's just have a quick look at something. So here I am in the demographics section um, of YouTube Analytics. And um, you can see that uh, the blue here is males and the green on the right-hand side are females. And clearly, this is a very male-dominated uh, area of interest, electronics. Um, there's a table of numbers down here, and these numbers are familiar to me. The uh, percentage of my viewers who are male is 98%, and it's been like that for years. And the percentage that are female is 2.2%. I'm not quite sure what these numbers are, because these are showing um, very similar numbers on male and female. So I don't quite know what those numbers mean. But this is the main statistic. I was hoping to show um, the ratio between males and females at a young age. Well, I suppose it's up here, isn't it? Um, it says male 0.9% uh, of my viewers within the age range 13 to 17 are male and zero are female. So it certainly doesn't seem to be working um, for YouTube viewers. But yeah, 98% of my viewers are male 
and 2.2% are female, which uh, is really disappointing, I think. So uh, despite their best efforts with the gender neutrality, um, it really doesn't seem to be attracting girls into uh, electronics, certainly not as a toy. But in terms of the kit itself, uh, despite the rather dubious labelling, I think this is a really good kit. I'm very pleased with my purchase. Cheerio.